All right, so let's get to the eBay unboxing. Now, it's close to my birthday, so I just buy myself a lot of shiz right before the... It's a good excuse, right? So when the husband gets mad and says, hey, why are you buying all this shiz? By the way, here's Bohemian Antique Bohemian Moser glass. If you want to check out my video I just made about this type of glass, go ahead and check it out. Now, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, and when you uh, are interested in watching marathon videos about antiques, uh, you'll get to watch them and get notifications too. All right, back to this. So it's a good excuse uh, to buy stuff when you're, you know, always in trouble uh, because I can just turn around and say, hey, it's my birthday coming up, you know, and then it's like always, even from a kid, like my birthday, like one week before to 10 to 12 days before, I'd always like be like, oh, my birthday's coming up. My birthday's coming up. So it's like once a year that you can just like sort of get away with more than you normally can. I don't even know what's in here. I ordered so many things. So we will find out in a moment what exactly this is. And sometimes I order really exquisite things and sometimes, oh, there's a hair. Oh, that, oh, come on, man. All right, yeah, I get a little skeeved out by stuff like that. We'll cut over here. Uh, what was I saying? Sometimes I order really exquisite stuff when I have the money, and sometimes I order whimsies, you know, $20, $30 whimsies. So I think this might be a whimsy. And, uh, yeah, I don't spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on each antique. I look for the bargains or what they call sleepers. All right, peanuts, peanuts, peanuts. It's messy. And it's static electricity and, all right, I just don't want it all over my floor because then I'll be like cleaning that up and I don't like cleaning. All right, here we go. It's small. It's small. All right, so far it's small. And I hope it's what I think it is because I was really waiting for this one. It is. Okay, I'll tell you the story. You probably don't even care to know. All right, so I've always wanted a pocket watch. My whole life, I've always wanted, but antique. Not not one of these new mass-produced things, unless you want to give me a Rolex. Oh, there goes the dogs to bomb my video. Um, I'll be back. If the dogs aren't going to stop, this goes on all day long. All right, so I always wanted a pocket watch, right? And not a mass-produced like Timex. You know what I mean? And first of all, watch, watches are pretty much obsolete right now. Oh. I just threw uh, four cookies out in the yard. <laughs> and my dog, it went in the grass, so my dog has to like look around for it. Okay. Uh, the other dog's quiet, thankfully. So I always wanted a pocket watch, saw this, fell in love, and was like, there's no way I'm going to win this. There's no way. It's antique. It, they say it works, and uh, yeah, they don't usually work. And uh, so I went in at the last second. My heart was thumping. My heart was racing. And I waited until five seconds to the auction's end, and then I went boom, and I put my bid in, and I did a five-second snipe and beat everybody else out, $66 and 20-something cents, and I could not believe I won this. And this is French, and I, I never had a pocket watch before, so I'm going to tell you something right now. I think it's French. It's continental. When they say continental, it means Europe. Uh, I know nothing about these. Oh, my other dog is here. Hello. Go away. And uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, so I really know nothing about these, but wow. All right, it comes with the original pocket watch chain. That is really, okay, that is really incredible. And it comes with a key. Apparently, it's a key winding one. Know nothing about these. I don't even know how to set this thing right now. I don't even know how to get this thing going. But again, what I like is it comes with the original chain. How old is it? Mm, I don't know. Do you know? If you're a pocket watch aficionado or you know anything about old pocket watches, let me know. I'm going to guess that this is from anywhere between 1890s to about 19... 15. Uh, I'm looking at the engine turning on the pocket watch chain. It's telling me early 20th century. Uh, I'm no expert. Is this real gold or silver or precious metal? Don't know. But I think this is silver. The, the seller did mention that this was silver. And here we go on the back. Oh my God, that is beautiful. Look at that design. Now these are actually, these were mass produced for women. When I was Googling it and trying to look it up, I found that these pocket watches were mass produced for women. Uh, it was a woman's or a lady's uh, pocket watch. And how do you even open this? <laughs> I don't know how to open it. Is there like a way 
How do you pop? Oh, I think you pop it open by pressing this button. But let's take a look at this dial. And what I really liked about it, I just want to, I don't want you to see my reflection. So we're going to lower this down. Here we go. And then I'm just going to go over here with the camera. We got a glare, unfortunately. And what I like about it, it has a porcelain dial. Don't know if you can see that with uh, gold gild and gold gild going around the numbers. And I really like the blue numbers. Wow, look at the intricateness of this. Do you see that? That is just something else. And the crystal looks like it's in really good shape. I don't know if it was ever uh, replaced, but wow. Okay, I see two hinges over here. So how does this open? How does one open one of these? We'll find out on this episode of I don't know what the hell. It's like one of the first times I'm making a video about an antique and I really know nothing about it. All right, so I think you press this down. Do you press this down? Well, son of a gun. I don't know how to do this. Wait. Do you press this and then it's supposed to pop open? Can anybody help me? Oh, there's like a hinge over here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, crap. I'm going to end up breaking this. Let's put bubble wrap underneath. So in case if I go, you know, and I slip. How the hell do you open these things? Wait, let me see. Is there any other groove? Is there any other groove on here? All right, let's try. Oh, it's hard because I have nails. How do you open one of these? Oh, I don't want to break it. Son of a gun. There's got to be a way to pop this open. I think you wedge your nail in here somewhere. Watch me break this son of a bitchin' thing, and then I will cry. All right, so this... I can't see what I'm doing, boys and girls. How do you open this? All right, well, guess what? It's a pocket watch. I want it on eBay. I see these selling in working condition for about uh, 400. I'm seeing them on average sell up on, on like real good websites. You know what I mean? Like specialty websites for about 450 to $475. I don't know if that's what this one's worth. Uh, it said it was working. The guy does sell pocket watches and, and watch parts and watches. So apparently he must have serviced it. And uh, it came with no guarantee, of course. But how the hell do you open this? Does it open like this and then... All right, bubble wrap time again. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, that scared me, that sound, that crackling. How do you open... Do I have to Google this now? Oh, Phenobola. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. I... <laughs> I, th I, this is like something a butcher would use. All right, I just found this in the drawer. It's one of my husband's tools or some shit. Okay, it's apparently you're supposed to pry it with some kind of tool right on the hinge or some shit. Let me just zoom in so I can use this as a magnifying glass to probably see what the hell I'm doing. And oh my God, why did I have to like get one of these? I really love it, but yeah, this is like really scary. This is very scary. I can't, I can't pry it. Wait, it says to pry it with this thing, with this tool. How do you open the pocket watch? I don't want to break it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, whatever this thing is. It's a, it's a red devil. Yeah, red devil, whatever. Okay, all right, so we can get in here now. I think. Oh, okay, so that opens up this, but that's not what I wanted. That's not what I asked for. I wanted to open the back. Well, shit. Okay, hold on. Uh, how do you open the back? How do you open the back? That is the question. All right, let's try this again. All right, so is there a hinge for the back? Let's try this gently. That only opens the front. How do you open the back? Oh my God. Am I a schmuck or what? Now it won't close. What did I do? Uh, how do you get the back open? I'll be back. Okay, I figured it out. This is like the best tool. This is like the best tool for opening this thing up. Okay. All right, so now we can see what goes on in here. Oh, wow. All right, this probably needs a servicing. So this probably needs a, a cleaning, a good cleaning. I don't know anything about pocket watches, but I do know they need to be serviced. 
So here's what the inner uh, the innards looks like. Let's uh, try to get a, a zoom in on this if we can. And uh, I mean, we're dealing in uh, microscop microscopics right now. Hold on, let me just lift up my camera a little and go like this. Let me just zoom out just a hair. And now we can see what's going on inside of here. It says some things, right? It says some words. It has little screws and gears and that's what I love about it. It says fast, slow. I think I think that's what that says, like right there. I can't see. I'm trying to look through my camera right now, like almost as if it's a microscope. And apparently it's supposed to be working in working condition. Uh, it's silver. I think, I think it's eight something silver. Can we even see? It says something. Nine, is that 955 silver? We have some markings in here. I don't know who made this watch. Can we even see that? I will Google that later. But if you guys know anything about old pocket watches, I would love to know more about this. It looks like it has a, a mark. What is that? Hold on. I cannot see it. I cannot see it at all right now. Is that a rampant lion or something like that? I don't know, French, English, who knows? It's continental, that's all I know. Let's check this out. All right, so it has uh, more marks, it appears. Let's, uh, can we see what that's, oh my God, I can't even see. This is really a sucky video. I am so sorry, guys, seriously. Okay, it has more markings back here. And I think it's English. And then we have more markings, of course, over there. And, all right, so I guess that sets the time with the key. There is some kind of mark over there. Maybe again, uh, metal quality. I cannot see a damn thing. Oh my God, hold on. Let's try if we can see. And I cannot, yeah, I'm definitely not that show, Wristwatch Re uh, Revival. Did you ever watch that guy? That guy is freaking fascinating. Oh my God, I can watch his videos for hours. Okay, when he takes these things apart, he has like some kind of tools that like make, the, like you can actually see the microscopic little screws and the workings. But yeah, so I guess this sets the time and this uh, winds it, something like that. Okay, we got a number one, 0719 maybe. And some markings over here. Don't know if that's French. I do know a lion usually denotes English. If that is a rampant lion, I can't tell. Uh, we got another mark again, the silver quality. Can't even really see that. I think it's 955, which is a high rate of silver. Uh, so yeah, all right, let's try to set it. And where's the key? Where is the damn key? It's attached, thank goodness, to this pocket watch chain. All right, and right now it is, hold on, I gotta look at the time. It is 2.37 p.m. All right, so let me go ahead and insert. The, can you even see what I'm doing? Oh, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and insert this in here. Oh, God, I'm so scared. Which way does it go? Okay, so I'm gathering clockwise, right? I guess we'll figure this out in a moment. Okay, it's in there. Two th oh, wait, it fell out. For fuck's sakes. <laughs> Sorry for the language. I just get frustrated. I have low frustration tolerance. All right, so 234. Oh, so you can turn it this way. All right, I'll be back. All right, let's see if we can wind this up now. Uh, I got the time. And I'm not, I'm I'm not going to wind it all the way. Because that would be a really stupid thing to do. So when I when it gets resistant, like I'm gonna oh shit oh fuck I think I overwound it. I think I just fucked the mainspring. Oh my god, you stupid idiot! You idiot! Yeah, I think I blew it. Hold on. Oh my god, you idiot! See, this is why people like me shouldn't have pocket watches. Can you press the damn button and get it going? Let me see if it's ticking. Hold on. Yep, I think I busted the mainspring. Fuck, at least I know about that, but... Mmm. I just overwound it. Okay, so this just went south real fast. I mean, it had, re it had like, it didn't warn me of resistance because it had wind in it. You follow what I'm saying? 
So, yeah. All right. I'm pissed. I, I have to go away and I'll be back in a few minutes. Now, the messed up thing of this whole scenario was that, trust me, I, I know not to over wine things. And there, it had wind in it. And it was winding and I did not push it too hard. And it just went ping. So, my guess is it, it's the mainspring. I'm no expert, but I, I, I know the mainspring at least. All right. So, this is for aesthetic reasons only now. So, it's for uh, looks. And all right. Really, honestly, I was never going to use it. I will try to look for somebody in Long Island um, that can service these old watches. If you know, please write in the comments below if there's any people on Long Island that will service this watch. And probably, of course, but a, a mainspring shouldn't be too expensive to replace. Um, it's uh, widely you know, sold on the internet, those parts. So if anyone knows of anyone, they can recommend me. That's not going to charge me. I don't know, $300 or $250 to service this old watch. Let me know. Like, uh, I don't want to pay like 10 times the amount I paid for the watch because I only paid $66 and change for it. Still, uh, silver wise and beauty wise, this is, I don't want to drop it. This is just something gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into something. Um, like we're going to make lemons out of lemonade. How's about that? Okay, so I know pocket watch enthusiasts all over the place are probably like, you idiot. Like you have no, you, you don't even have a right to own a pocket watch after what you just did to it. Uh, you fool, you know, you total idiot. But guess what? During the Victorian time frame and the early 20th century, women would wear these as pendants also, uh, not only hanging from their waist or from their buttonholes, they would also hang them from around their neck. So I'm going to turn this into a re really neat looking necklace. So you can just wear this as a pendant. And uh, what's cool is you can have the dial side shown or you can flip it over and you can actually display it. Now, I, I made a swivel. I, I put a swivel clip onto uh, one of these like a uh, T-bar type of necklaces. And uh, yeah, you can actually wear this as a pendant on your neck. And it could be like a big chunky piece of silver. And uh, you can actually make lemons out of lemonade, although I'll have to admit... I'm going to tell you right now, I'm extremely, ex the freaking lighting sucks in here, by the way. I'm extremely upset right now. I'm not fooling you. The guy did say that it was working, but he couldn't guarantee it. You know what I'm saying? That type of jammy. But yeah, I heard that spring go bing. And I was like, shit, you know, it, you can't go back in time. It was my first, get it? You can't go back in time. You can't go back in time and undo some things you do, although you wish that you had a do-over. Well, you don't get a do-over when it comes to antiques or antique pocket watches, as you can see here. But if you know anybody who could fix this in the Long Island area, uh, Nassau, preferably, or Suffolk, or maybe even uh, the borough of Queens, New York, please let me know. This is a lost art. Nobody's really fixing these anymore. And if they do, they're going to charge an arm and a leg. And I don't want it to cost more money than I paid for it. Um, I don't expect someone to fix this thing for $66. But at the same time, uh, if it's going to be two, three, four hundred dollars to service this, yeah, I can't. It's not worth it. So, I mean, the value on this is only about $475 in working condition. So I don't want, you know what I mean? I don't want to do that. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you're a pocket watch collector who just happened to come across my channel and my videos, I do do uh, antique videos, videos about antiques and things I know about. Things I, yeah, things that I'm much better at than uh, pocket watches or timepieces. And please don't write something nasty in the comments. I know you're, you, you all are. You pocket watch collectors out there. I don't blame you. Because if I was a collector of, say, which I am, of antique dolls. And I just saw someone like getting their first antique doll and they went on, you know, the video and they busted the antique doll's head, by, you know, by accident. You know, say it was made out of bisque porcelain. And I saw that live on camera. I'd be like, you moron. Excuse my language. You fucking mook. You fucking reject. Uh, how stupid. You know what I mean? So I know a lot of you are, are sitting there, you know, like this. Hey, you freaking... You, 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 I'm, I'm like, I, I can't say the words I want to say. You know what I mean? I'm a New Yorker and uh, YouTube really doesn't like it when you actually let your ire out <laughs> on video or your Italian out. And uh, so, yeah, I know a lot of you are like, you mook, you moron, you idiot, you uh, 
gabagool. <laughs> you totally screwed up. You gabagool. You, well, uh, Italians, <laughs> Italians will probably be uh, saying a few other things, uh, too. But, uh, yeah. Ah, ah, what a bust. What a total bust. My first pocket watch, and I'm disappointed. <laughs> well, fuck me dead. All right. What could you do, right? Shit happens. So if you, again, if you know in the comments below how I can get this fixed for cheap, please let me know. And uh, thank you for watching. Yep, my first pocket watch. I still love it. I still love it. I still think it's beautiful. And if you know more about this, I know these are considered continental. If you know who made this, is it French? Is it a French maker? Is it English? Is it German? You know, I, I would really love to know. Wow, the lighting is really shitty right now in here. Uh, it's like cloudy in here. I, I, I can't get like a good, a good, uh, you know, lighting on this. But yeah, if you know more about this watch, please tell me in the comments below. I would love to know. All right, that's it. I'm out and I'm very depressed.